One of the numerous game changer capabilities in Databricks data platform is Lakehouse Federation, which allows data engineers to run queries across multiple external data sources without the need to migrate all the data into the Databricks environment. This is incredibly useful because it saves a lot of time and effort that would otherwise be spent on complex ETL processes. And one of the standard features of Lake Health Federation is the seamless integration with Unity Catalog, which provides robust data governance and lineage tools. This means we can manage access and audit all federated queries seamlessly, ensuring that data security and compliance are maintained across the board. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how we can run federated queries on Google BigQuery. First, we're going to create a Google Cloud Storage Account and we're going to load data into the bucket of the storage account. And then we're going to create BigQuery data set and table and then we're going to read data from the bucket to the BigQuery table. And then we're going to start the Databricks cluster. We're going to create a connection to the BigQuery and test the connection to establish whether it's working or not. And then we're going to create foreign catalog and then we're going to create the data in Databricks SQL editor. And we're going to update the BigQuery table and check again in the Databricks SQL. So let's dive in. Before we start this end-to-end -end project, I'm going to encourage you to please click on the subscribe button and enable the bell icon to be informed of new videos. Let's see the sample data set. I'm going to come to the CSV file that contains 20 rows of records across the order date to the sales amount column. We're going to ingest this CSV file into the Google Cloud Storage bucket. So I'm going to come back here. And then we can go to the console.cloud.google.com. I'm going to first in the search menu set for bucket. And I can see that I've got no bucket in this cloud storage account. We want to create a new one. So click on create. We're going to give this bucket a meaningful name. I'm going to call it Lake House Federation. And then we can click on continue. Now we're going to stick with this default multi region location type. I'm going to click on continue and I'm going to stick with this basic choose a storage class for your data. So just scroll down and click on continue. And then we're going to maintain the setup for choose how to control access to objects. So just click on continue at the bottom. And then I'm going to click on create. Our bucket is now created, Lake House Federation. So we're going to go ahead and ingest the data into this newly created bucket. To do that, I can click on this upload and then I can upload files. I'm going to go to the location and ingest the sales2015.csv. Double click and then we can see the sales2015.csv. I can click on that and I can see the object and including the version history. Under the object, we can see the size, type, created, last modified, and so on and so forth. This is sorted. We want to go ahead and create our BigQuery data set. So I can come to this menu and search for BigQuery. I'm going to click on BigQuery. And in the BigQuery, I'm going to stick with this Cornerstone Solutions project. So I'm going to click on this ellipsis, but in Databricks, this is known as Kebab. So click on that. I'm going to create a new data set. In the create data set, I'm going to provide a data set ID and then stick with the default settings and then move to create data set. I'm going to call this one Federation Data and then click on create data set. And I can see this should only contain letters, numbers, or underscores. So I can change this to underscore and then click on create data set. So the federation data data set has been created. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on this ellipsis and I'm going to create a table. So for the table, I'm going to choose the Google Cloud Storage and then I'm going to upload the file. So click on that. I can click on Lake House Federation bucket name and I can see the sales2015.csv. So we can see the file name and we click on select. And then the file format is comma separated value, which is detected automatically. And then for the destination, it's going to be landed into our project name, Cornerstone IT Solutions. And then we can see the name of the data set, Federation underscore data. I'm going to call this one transaction data. And I can scroll down. So this is going to be a native table type. I'm going to check the auto detect schema, which is really important. And then click on create table. 
Okay, there we go. So we can say transaction underscore table has been created under the Federation data data set. Now I can click on this and I can query this data. I'm going to click on query. And then I can just put in star here. So this is going to be select star all the rows from the Cornerstone IT Solutions project name. And then we have the Federation data, which is similar to a schema. And we have the name of the table transaction underscore data. I'm going to click on run. And then we can see all the data. And let me collapse this for now. So we can see we have the order date, year, month, region, subcategory to the sales column. So this is how we can easily create buckets and we can create big query data set and table and then query. So this is straightforward. We want to go ahead and move to the Databricks environment. I'm going to come here and I'm going to first start my cluster. So I've got this Abiola Abiola cluster, which is a personal compute. And I'm going to click on this start to get started. This is going to be spinning and this might take about five minutes. The cluster is now running. So I'm going to create a connection to BigQuery and test the connection. So to do that, I'm going to click on catalog and then I'm going to click on the plus sign and then we can add a connection. I'm going to provide a meaningful name for this connection. I'm going to call it Big Google BigQuery connection. And then I'm going to set for Google Big Query from the list of databases. And I'm going to provide the Google service account key JSON. Now, how do we get this? It's super straightforward. I'm going to quickly duplicate this tab. And then I can come back here and set for IAM. And in the IAM, we're going to go to service account. So I'm going to pick IAM here, the admin. And then on the left hand pane, we're going to set for service account. Now, for now, I've got no service account. I'm going to show you how to create the whole thing and then get the JSON key. So, to create a service account, just click on create service account. And I'm going to call this one or give it a meaningful name. So, I'm going to call this one Federation Service Account. Leave this as this. Click on create and continue. Now, I'm going to come to this grant, this service account, access to project. I'm going to click on this, select a row, and then I'm going to use the basic, or I'm going to stick with this currently used and use the owner row because I'm the owner of this project and click on continue. So I'm going to stick with this default grant user access to this service account, which is optional. Just click on done. So we can see we have the newly created Federation service account and then I can click on that and we're going to see the details. Under the details, we can see the name, we can see description if we have any, we can see the email, the unique ID, service account status, which is enabled. And then we want to come to the keys. This is the core part. So we want to go ahead and create a key. So click on add key and I'm going to create a new key. And they're going to use the key type as JSON, which is the recommended, not this P2. So I'm going to go with this default, click on create. So this is going to be created and downloaded into my browser. So I'm going to just open it up and I'm going to control A to select the whole thing, control C to copy and then come back here. And I'm going to come to this box, control V to paste. And then I'm going to provide the project ID. Now, this is super straightforward also. Now, to get a project ID is easy. It is part of your URL. So I'm going to copy everything from this part, which is Cornerstone IT Solution. So this is my project ID. I'm copy that and come back here and paste. That's the project ID. And I can add any comments if I choose to. So let's test the connection to see whether this is going to be successful. So I'm going to be using the... Abiola Abiola cluster to test the connection. Click on test. And then there we have the connection established. The provided connection information has been verified and can successfully connect to your external data source. You can proceed with creating connection. So click on create. And then we have the connection created. We can see the name of the connection. We can see the overview. And then we can see the URL. And we can see the project ID name. Now we can go ahead and create a foreign catalog that's going to hold our mirrored data from the big query that is the Federa Lake House Federation. So click on this create catalog. And then I'm going to call this one big query 
catalog. And then this is going to be a foreign catalog, not the native catalog that is unique to the internal Databricks assets. So we're going to stick with this um, the default connection, which is picked up automatically, and then we're going to create the catalog. So catalog created. So we can go ahead and configure the catalog. And we're going to use or allow this catalog to be used across the workspaces. And then we can see the name of the owner. When I scroll down, we can see the privileges. So we have all this bunch of privileges. We can even add more privileges if we choose. I can add the use catalog, use schema, perform select. And I can even add in you know, the browse, which is really important. And I'm going to choose the principal. So this is going to be all account. I can even use my name, which is fine. And then for the privilege presets, I can just use this data reader which can read from any object in the catalog so i'm going to click on grants at the bottom so we can see the list of the cat the privileges and then we can see the principal and then we can see the objects so i'm going to click on next and then we have this um select a key now this is absolutely not important despite the fact that we have this asterisk sign just click on save and we have the big query catalog i'm going to click on this to expand and then we're going to see the federation data just as exactly what we have here so this is what i'm talking about let me expand this so we can see we have the federation data data set and when i expand i'm going to see the table transaction table so that's exactly what we have here i'm going to expand this and you can see the transaction table so this is how we can easily establish connection to our big query to perform a lake house federation super easy now when i click on this transaction data i can see the overview and you can see the name of the owner and the source is big query so we can see this is external not internal and then we can see the size which is not determined and i'm going to click on the sample data and we're going to see the 20 rows in that csv file we ingested into the buckets Okay, so we can see we have all the records. When I scroll down, we have up to 20. We can even click on the details. We can click on the permissions and we can click on the history as well. Now, under the detail, we can see this is a foreign catalog. Okay, so we can see the date it was created, created by, and so on and so forth. We want to go ahead and query this data in Databricks um, SQL. So I'm going to make sure this is selected and then I'm going to click on this create and I want to create a query. All right, so we're going to see the BigQuery catalog here, and then I can just go ahead and perform the select star from transaction underscore data, which is the table. Just go ahead and run the query, and then we're going to see the results in a moment. Okay, there we go. So we are able to query this external data in Databricks. SQL editor, which is super cool. Now I can close this for now and then we can scroll down and see all the records. Okay. All right. So now what about if I perform an update in BigQuery? I'm going to see the changes here. Now I'm going to actually show you that quickly. Now when you pay attention to the region, we've got the South, East, um, Central, and I think um, the West. Okay. So I'm going to quickly go to the BigQuery and make an update to the table and then we're going to see what happens here whether it's going to be updated live or not in databricks sql editor so let's come back here and then i can just use okay let me just come back to the next line i'm going to perform a simple update so update um cornerstone or oh, let me just copy the whole thing okay cornerstone it solution dot federation data data set and then we have the table so update that and we're going to set the region equal to um, let's do not central okay and okay let me just break this down to make it easier for us to read okay not central so we're going to use the where clause so where region column is equal to let's do west okay so let's go ahead and run this update and see the changes okay so it has been changed and let's go ahead and query this data back and see the changes so there we go so we can see we have the not central replaced with 
West region. So they can scroll down and see the changes here. Now let's come back to the BigQuery and then query this table again and see whether we're going to say the North Central or not. So I'm going to go back and just run the code again. Click on query. Amazing. So this took 11 seconds, 4, 3, 2 milliseconds, and there we go. So we have the North Central replaced with West. So we can see this is actually connecting live to the BigQuery environment. So whatever update or changes we made in that source, and then we run the query back here, we're going to see the changes. So this is how we can implement Lake House Federation from BigQuery to Databricks. I trust you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, comment, share, and follow me for more videos. There is a lot to come. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.